version of that. Back to you. All right, uh, Sonia, thanks very much uh, for that. Uh, so that's Autos in Focus. Harendra Kumar is Managing Director at Ilara Securities. He's joining us now uh, to take some questions. Harendra, good to have you with us here. You know, uh, respond to the news which is just coming through, Harendra. Uh, the uh, FPO uh, getting uh, fully done uh, one time. Uh, this is, of course, exchange data. Uh, uh, any thoughts? I mean, uh, w this has, of course, been the uh, big number one issue, uh, point of discussion in terms of uh, impact on uh, the group and, of course, the market as well. With this getting done, what now? What from here, in your opinion, Harindra? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the aspect is, while it's uh, captured a lot of news attention uh, in terms of uh, the price impact has been very narrow to some of the PSU banks, uh, you know, to put it in right perspective. So I think, uh, thankfully, now we go back to real numbers, uh, real markets and real, uh, you know, events, which is the budget uh, tomorrow. I think uh, while it's become a fashion to say that the budget is not material and it doesn't change the course of the markets, I think uh, tomorrow's budget, uh, if crafted well, uh, will have opportunities to change course of the market. And mind you that we've been now for the last six quarters at the same level, index levels. And, uh, you know, this is quite excruciating to be at the certain level. Thankfully, we've seen a lot of value emerging in the market. And if uh, the right moves are made, we could see the market taking a lift off, which is, you know, due for quite some time now. So you don't think... So you don't think uh, what we've seen over the last couple of days with the Adani Group has kind of broken the rhythm of the back uh, of the markets right now? You don't get that feeling. You think we can go back to what it was, say, a week ago? Yeah, actually, we've been at the same level for the last uh, six quarters, which is around 18 months, and we've seen a temporary blip. Uh, so, But the price damage, on the at least on the index level, has not been much. Uh, but to put it in the other way, right, uh, what are the events that could probably play up in the current financial year is one is on the 10 years sharp correction, inclusion in the bond index, a return of the FI flows, which is over the last two years have been absent, uh, you know, uh, uh, increase in the FDI number. So if these issues get resolved in the budget tomorrow, I think you could see a large swing or, you know, pullback into the markets. Uh, and I think at least we would be watching for, you know, clues on that front, uh, you know, and, and get a perspective on where should you be tactically positioned in the market uh, for the next 24 months. I uh, request you to hang on uh, for just a minute. By the way, just to pull up a couple of stocks in the broader markets. Suzlon has suddenly found its mojo. It's moved to the high point of the day. Uh, Shahi India as well has spiked up in the last few minutes. So just keep an eye out on that stock as well. But from the nifty pack, UPL has come out with its set of numbers. Well, Sonal has had a brief look at that, and she's also here to run us through those numbers, as well as Sonal, they're reiterating their guidance on the revenues as well as on the debt reduction, right? Oh, yes, they are. And that's a positive because the company did speak about channel inventory destocking as well. And they say despite that, they expect that revenue growth uh, that they had guided for earlier. They had guided for a revenue growth of around 12 to 15 percent, uh, a bit of guidance of around 15 to 18 percent. And also their debt reduction guidance. Earlier, they had guided for $650 million in terms of net debt reduction. And they continue to hold on to their guidance as well. This time around, uh, revenues are up 21 percent at 13,679 crore rupees, which is slightly better than what the street was working with. Even in terms of EBITDA as well, the company has uh, done better. But if we talk about the margins at 21.1%, this compares with a poll of 21.9%. Profits too uh, for company this time around have looked good. Now, if we talk about the geographical breakup as well, uh, this time around the company has done well across all the geographies barring Europe and that continues to be a pain point for the company and they did say that that is something that will continue as well. So, Latin America has grown by 28%. That continues to be the big growth market for the company. North America has grown by 30%. India also as a market is up 19% and rest of the world is up 12%. While India this time around because of the erratic uh, uh, weather was expected to be on the lower side but that hasn't happened and across the board barring Europe the company has done well and also maintaining that guidance in a challenging environment and also at the time when other agrochemical companies have not reported good numbers. This comes as a surprise and also reasonable valuations are lowest in the agrochemical space around 12 times one year forward earnings all this bodes well for the company, and that's why the stock is hard in trade as well. Thanks a lot for that, Sonal. Harinder, what do you make of uh, the stock? You know, valuation-wise, it's had some bit of comfort. 
So it is always skeptical in terms of uh, you know the promoter pedigree at times and other various factors. What do you make of the numbers and your view on the stock? Uh, sorry, which company? UPL. UPL. Yeah. So, okay, so, you know, Nigel, I think the way to look at the agrochemical companies is that we are in a super cycle in terms of food inflation worldwide. And within that space, I think, uh, you know, a lot of the agrochemical companies will see tailwinds in terms of prices and higher volume growth. Uh, while the Indian companies have a restricted market, UPL has access to the global markets. Uh, I think beyond, uh, you know, certain circumspection, I think UPL stands to benefit from this secular trend. I think food inflation in terms of, you know, worldwide food inflation is here to stay, uh, even in the current financial year, and UPL could be a primary beneficiary out there. Okay, all right, uh, Harendra, great having you on the show. Thank you very much for joining in. Uh, we'll leave it on that note for now. The market's uh, looking quite interesting, actually. Some of the stocks are flying around. Now look at ITC, look at Lever. Uh, so a lot of the pre-budget hope play perhaps is quite evident as we get set for today's close. The intraday's will come up for you. Days high on ITC, levers looking good. Let's do one thing. We'll take a break and uh, start recapping what is the final trading couple of minutes uh, before the budget.